Katie. Welcome back to my channel. I am doing another reading recap and so I'm going to start <laughs> last time I finished with When You Get a Chance, When You Get the Chance by Emma Lord and um, I was like, will it be like Mama Mia where you don't know who the mother is? And the answer is no. You do find out. Um, I love at the end how everything comes together and how everyone's world collides. So yeah, it was a really, really good book, so read it if you love Mamma Mia or any of the intrigue that goes along with that. Next I read Wings of Betrayal, The Fairy Rebel by Brittany Wang. This is part of her On Wings of Ash and Dust series, and it was so good. The fairy clans, there's five, and the world building and her descriptions, like everything is so so good, so intriguing. Quinn is a pirate. She came from the Gwilian clan and um, ran away. She didn't want the pressure and she didn't want like her dad's frowning. Um, <laughs> so she ran away to be a pirate. Um, she gets betrayed, hence Wings of Betrayal. And um, the rest of the story unfolds with her entering the contest that her brother died, her twin brother died, um, trying to qualify for this contest. And it's about the princes and princesses of these five clans competing for who gets to rule all the clans. So it's really good. It's all set up. We're going into like, I don't know if it's going to be Hunger Games style or what, um, for book two coming out on August 17th called Palace of Potions. I'm on her ARC team, her advanced reader copy team, and so I get to read it before all y'all and I'm so excited. <laughs> I have a video specifically for Wings of Betrayal and I'll have a video for each um, serial, each episode um, as well. Next I read People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. Um, this had a lot of good reviews so I was hoping um, to like it more than I did. I think it got slow and just like meandered at the end. Um, it was just too much like I think it should have just been a little bit straighter I enjoyed like who she met on vacation how they changed her and the love interest but I just didn't really like the ending just dragged for me I then read the invisible life of Addie LaRue which is really fun to talk about with people because everyone has opposing opinions um, I was gonna DNF this book until about 30% basically when we meet Henry is that his name um, then I was like, okay, like this got intriguing. And I also liked Luke's character, even though like, yes, he's a demon <laughs> guy. You're probably not supposed to like him. Um, but yeah, I was intrigued by all of that. I do wish, um, I was talking with Bridie Blake about this, um, that there was more history put in and more about what she experienced in different times. Bridie didn't like the romance aspect and so um, so that was fun to talk about with her but at the end um, I know a lot of people didn't like that ending or maybe didn't see it coming I don't know but I totally thought something like that would happen but yeah you're intrigued the whole way trying to guess what Henry, like how, why Henry can see her and talk to her. Addie LaRue, if you don't know, no one can remember her. Um, I love the little bits that like she leaves with artists to get remembered in history. I thought that concept was really cool. Next I read Heartbreak for Hire by Sonia Hartle. And this one, did I even say Addie LaRue was B.E. Schwab? Sorry. <laughs> Heartbreak for Hire, an adult contemporary romance. Um, it's about these, this company called Heartbreak for Hire, there's five of them, four of them, and they each are in charge of something like cheaters, people with egos, people with whatever, and people pay them to go and like, um, like say they cheated, then they go and um, get that person really invested and then cheat on them. Or if they have egos, they like totally just rip them a new one and shatter their confidence so they're not like egotistic to their female, um, like, workers and like whatever um so the main girl gets paid to go do this to one of the ego guys and it actually just turned out well I, I won't say <laughs> um basically that guy um comes to work for heartbreak for hire and like this whole thing ensues um the guy I liked him except he was so like I didn't like how blunt he was about the sex stuff like 
he didn't come off that way, like the Dirty Professor vibe. So I was like really thrown off by that and didn't like it. And I thought she could have just taken that out of a few moments and it would have been fine. Um, but yeah, it's it's a steamy romance. She leaves some stuff in there. The main character is also afraid to call herself an artist and really get going with that part of her life so that she could leave Heartbreak for Hire. And the guy, he's also going through some stuff trying to like rise to the top of the collegiate Stuff instead of doing what he wants which is middle grade teaching so they each have their things to go through I honestly did not know what to rate this book um, it was good it had issues like I feel like everything I read now I just want <laughs> to give everything like threes <laughs> um, I got an art copy of you can go your own way by Eric Smith I really wanted to read his other one um, don't read the comments and I haven't read that one yet but this one um, is interesting the main characters they're like in a pinball arcade and then like an e-gaming and so they're a competition and the pinball arcade the boy lost his dad and so it's kind of drowning and um, they're not really sure how to save it and then this one's dad is over here like let me buy it from you and turn it to something else and they don't want to let it go but um, there's a city festival coming and it's snowing and the main characters end up in the pinball arcade together all along so it's close proximity uh, one blanket, one bed, I guess, um, and then like reconnecting. So they're kind of like friends to enemies to lovers. At the uh, beginning of Adam's chapters, there's this book, and I don't know if it's real, I didn't look it up, but The Art of Zen and Pinball Repair. It's got some deep thoughts. It's like good, good psychology there. <laughs> um, and, or psychology, is that what I mean? I think so. Good like counseling sessions. Um, and the realizations that Whitney and Adam had toward the ends of, of the book about themselves and um, what they're doing and what they want I thought was really great. A lot of people didn't like the romance, um, chemistry, love angle of these two. Um, I thought it was believable. Uh, yeah, I don't know. To each their own. <laughs> It was a really fast read for me. Um, I was shocked by how fast I went through it. And I really enjoyed the last chapter. It kind of set up how their future was going to go and gave you like a hope and put a smile on your face for that. I gave this one four stars. But yeah, that's all right now. And I finally don't have a TBR. Um, I think I have some ebooks I could be reading, but I don't think I have any more art copies yet. But I really want to focus on my writing, so that's totally okay with me. However, if you have read any favorite recent reads, please put them in the comments down below so that I can check those out. Um, I'm trying to read more adult romantic, con contemporary romance, uh, romantic comedies, because that's kind of what I want to write next. And I need to read more so I have more comp titles and um, a better sense of how adult goes. Um, it really sucks, because like in the people we meet on vacation there was so much extra filler that I thought could be taken out but then I was like maybe that's what romance is like adult like maybe you have to add the like <laughs> I don't think all books do that so I just need to read other uh, authors but let me know if y'all have any good recommendations down below and if y'all have read any of the ones that I did and what your thoughts on them were like Abby LaRue that's all for this review recap thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch y'all in the next video bye